Coach Setcher, how are you, sir? Good morning, guys. I'm good. How are you? We are doing fantastic this morning. Okay, tough loss on Saturday to number 23 at the time, Nevada, 83-58. to 58. What aren't you seeing from your team in the second half that you need to see? Because it was a tie game going into half. Yeah, we've been in a lot of time games going into half, but uh, have not been able to play a complete 40 minutes. Uh, what happened, Nevada, more than anything, is offensively we struggled mightily. We shot 28%. And all those misses they ran out on. And we did not do a very good job of getting back in uh, conversion defense. And uh, as they started the fast break, they started to open up the margin on us. And it, was, it rolled downhill in a hurry, and we couldn't get it turned around. You said shooting 24%. Are you getting the good looks that you want? Is there something that you can do, I guess, to get guys freer? Or is there just need to take better so shot selection or just need to make the shots that they've got if they're taking the good ones? You know, it's a little bit of everything. And what young kids will do when things start going bad, they, it's not selfishness. It's just innate in their, in their ability sometimes as they think they're going to get us back in in a hurry. And so they might take a rush shot or two, and then that just continues to compound. And so we watched tape yesterday about some of the shots I thought were not advisable that we took. And uh, we call it hero ball. Sometimes when you get going bad, someone tries to get you back in the game themselves and, try to eliminate some of those hero ball shots and, and play good team basketball, which for the year we've done. Obviously, our assists are up from 10 a year ago to 15 a game, five-plus assists more than we've had. And so I like the way we share the ball. It's just when things don't go well, sometimes the tendency is to try to do things too fast. Brian Dutcher with us on Extra 1360 Fox Sports San Diego. Next up for San Diego State, they've got Wyoming tomorrow. Uh, they've got UNLV on Saturday. All games at Viejas Arena. All games heard right here on Extra 1360 Fox Sports San Diego. Dutch, uh, the, the, the lopsided score, when you watch the film in the second half, was effort ever in question for you when you watch it back? No, the kids play hard. You know, even in games that, you know, uh, where the score is closer or it's greater – my kids are really playing hard. And so I think sometimes when you see the margin go up like that, the tendency is to say, boy, they quit playing hard. They gave up. And, and that's more a direct result of the margin. And so I think maybe people don't give Nevada enough credit for being a ranked team, the best team in the conference, obviously, right now, that they just had our number and they rolled us the second half. And uh, uh, that happens sometimes. It's, it's not uh, what we want. It's not acceptable in any terms. But it happens, and so sometimes you have to tip your hat to Nevada and say they just dominated us in the second half. And I think that's more what happened than our kids giving in. Coach, it is a really young roster, and you even said they're young kids out playing a little bit of hero ball there. Were expectations before the season unreasonably high? I don't think so. I mean, I think, you know, it's like the Chargers when Keenan Allen went out last year. And you say, well, next man up but you're losing a, a Pro Bowl receiver. And Trey Kell is, uh, is a very important part of our team. And so he's missed part or most of eight games. So sometimes you're just a piece short from being what you want to be. And so we've got to get Trey healthy for down the stretch. Uh, I'm not sure he'll be ready for Wyoming. This will be two and a half weeks since his last injury. And you miss your senior captain. So whether that's an excuse or saying we would have won if we had him, no one will know that. But I know one thing, if you have all your pieces, your chance to be successful is greater. Dutch, how would you describe the season that Malik Pope is having? Malik has had a really solid season. He's shooting over 50% from the field. He's shooting high percentage from three. You know, he put up 13 rebounds in the last game. But when you're not having the success you want as a team, then everybody says Malik needs to do more. Could he have scored 20 points a game? And obviously that's all what we want for Malik. We give him some opportunities, but other teams know that with Trey out, Malik is the go-to guy. And so sometimes he faces double teams where they don't let him shoot the ball. And, you, and some of the shots he takes when he tries to force his game, you're like, why is he shooting over two defenders? Well, he's trying to help us win. So sometimes he gets in that predicament where he's frustrated, he wants to help us win, but nobody scores over a double team. And so he's got to continue to do what he's done and, and, and make the right plays. And we have to find ways to get him isolated where maybe he doesn't see the double team as much. But people know that Malik has to play well for us to win, and they, they pay a lot of attention to it. 
Aztecs basketball coach Brian Dutcher on with Hardwick and Richards extra 1360 coach with the record the way it is looking at the NCAA tournament you got to be looking at the Mountain West tournament and winning that thing is the only way to get in that said how do you manage Trey Kell over these next seven games in his health if he is that vital to the roster well we got to get him back and, and I know he hasn't done anything in practice yet he hasn't practiced with the team in two and a half weeks he's working hard rehab on his own away from us at the other end of the court with Sergio our trainer and I think he may try to go a little bit in practice today so it'll be the first time he's been in any kind of game rhythm so whether that means he'll be available for a minute or two on Wednesday I really don't know I'm hoping more uh, that we'll have him for UNLV on Saturday and then he's going to have to play himself into a rhythm. So even though he'll be available, hopefully, it may take him a week to get himself back into an offensive and defensive rhythm for not having played any game minutes. And so we will be very cautious with Trey. We won't do anything unless he's cleared uh, by our training staff and our medical staff. And then it'll be on Trey to just determine how he feels and, and how much he thinks he can contribute. But uh, we're going to be very careful with Trey, knowing that our chance to make the NCAA tournament is the conference tournament. Dutch, the, the combination of losing six of your last eight and a young team as well, the young guys getting a lot of playing time, how is the team's attitude doing? They're good, and that's on me and our coaching staff to, to, to set the tone, to say, you know, we have to get better. We're not going to get down. We're not going to give in. We're going to continue to fight for the name on the front of the jersey for San Diego State, and that's what we're doing. Uh, we had a great practice yesterday, and we put them to the task. We, we're we not coddling them. We're not telling them, hey, just hang in there. Uh, we had a pretty aggressive uh, practice. Uh, we did a lot of running. We did a lot of uh, 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 unacceptable type things where if, if you make a mistake, we're going to run for it, and, and we're setting a tone. And that's not only for the end of this year. That's the culture. That's setting the tone that this is not acceptable, that this is San Diego State. We have a high standard to live up to, and and we continue to play upon and build on that culture. Coach, Jalen McDaniel seems like he's got some star power ability to him. He shows it in spurts now. How long until you can see him just taking over a game? Jalen has to uh, learn how to be more consistent, both in practice and in the games. And that's most young kids. You know, they have flashes and they play well, but consistency is what allows you to do it over long periods of time. And so we're working hard with Jalen to concentrate longer, both in practice and in games, and he will do that. That's just the young guy maturing and, and learning what it's all about. And uh, as he continues to do that, he'll continue to blossom and, and have a chance to be, you know, a really, really good player down the road, not only this year, but down the road the next year or two. Dutch, uh, tell us a little bit about Wyoming. How are they playing currently in a chance at redemption after they beat you at their place uh, some time ago? They're playing really well. They have two players on their roster, uh, James and Dalton, that are both capable of going for, obviously Dalton went for 30-plus on us the first game, I think, and James also. So they have two dangerous, dangerous offensive players that if we don't really pay attention to them, they're capable of having big nights. So, you know, we have to get back in defense. We have to stop transition baskets. And uh, then we have to continue to uh, play through Malik, play smart basketball, and put ourselves in a position to uh, continue what's been a pretty good home record at 9-2. and two. Coach, last time you guys played, Dalton had that career game. How much do you put into that as potentially a one-off, or how much are you going to adjust your program on the defensive side of the ball to try to eliminate him? You know, he's had big games against a lot of people, so it's not just us, but we'll have – We'll have some things that we'll do to pay attention to him that uh, if he gets going, maybe to run a second defender at him at times to try to disrupt him. But uh, he's a very talented player and, and having an outstanding season. So we, we'll pay attention to him. We'll, we'll set the defense to try to take away some of the things he hurt us with the first time. But at the same tone, good players to find ways to manufacture their own shots, and he's done that in games. Pre-game begins at 7 p.m. tomorrow night. The Aztecs take on Wyoming 8 p.m. Again, you have two games at VA Haas Arena uh, this week. Wyoming tomorrow night, UNLV 1 o'clock start, in fact, on Saturday at VA Haas Arena. Dutch, best of luck. Thanks for your time. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Go get them, Coach.